And now, the moment you've all been waiting for. <laughs> the only thing that's wrong with that kid is that if his parents haven't kicked him out of the house on a Saturday night and given him a bottle of book fast and say, go down to the lads <laughs> and have a bit of crack. <laughs> Therein lies my problem. Ah. ah. Did you feel that yourself? No. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Good evening and welcome to Is It A Bicycle, Season 8, Episode 9, the original and bestest ever TV and movie podcast. My name is Stephen Wrigley and I'll be host for this evening. Uh, beside me, a man who this week said, and this is my bedroom where the magic happens. Sorry, I mean, where I read Harry Potter books. Uh, it's Mike <laughs> the McDonough. McDonough. Live from Vegas, we have a man who says the best thing about his phone screen shattering is that it now matches his dreams and aspirations. It's Sean, I love cans, Leonard. <laughs> and in the red corner, it's our cuddly killer. A man who says he got married uh, so that he could be autocorrected even when his phone was off. It's Mark, superhero, <laughs> Leonard. Mm. That's a good one. Did you like that? This week we hope to discuss some movies in the shape of Focus and 71 and some TV in the form of The Odd Couple and Last Man on Earth. We'll also have some news and some previews and coming to a bicycle near you. That's how we do. Fantastic, Steve. Thanks very much. Good, good, good. Just want to give a shout out to a new Irish podcast. It's uh, created by William Campbell. There's two episodes out at the moment. There's episode zero, which sort of sets the ground rules, and there's episode one, which is a really good listen. It's about 40 minutes long. It's about Ireland's political, social, and current affairs. It includes messages left on a phone line that he has specifically for it, an answering machine. So like, he can like ring the, it up. Like the bat phone. Like the bat phone, exactly. So you can ring it up. You can leave your message on an opinion that you have, and he will discuss it. What he uh, tells us is that this podcast won't be about who shouts loudest is right. It's who has the strongest argument, okay. which is quite refreshing. So we better not let Sean and Mark on then. And Sean and Mark are <laughs> banned. Fuck you guys. I teach, I teach logic yeah. at a university, okay? <laughs> Fuck you guys. I teach people how so to argue. Again, he, he said it, that really loud. Uh, he? He did, yeah. <laughs> so again, it's, it's on iTunes, is on Twitter, um, and his website is www.hereshow.ie. Go have a look. We think it's great. Get so much, news. so much for New Year's resolutions, eh? Mm. Oh, really? January 1st, I had decided I'm going to put me together a thin, streamlined new podcast <laughs> that only has three things we need to watch on it. <laughs> Where are we now? Fourth of March. <laughs> By the time you guys listen to this, it'll be the sixth. And already we've got two TV shows snuck in there by somebody's indecision. <laughs> you know, you, you, you try and be sleek. You try, you say you're not going to touch the donuts. And then what do you do? You wind up, you're trying to find another place to store extra donuts that wouldn't cause a rash in an affected area. <laughs> That's what's wrong with this podcast. <laughs> Got rashes. Rashes. <laughs> so that's, we're chock and block, Steve. I don't know if we have time to talk about stuff at the start. What do I, you think? I don't know. We'll, we'll have to be quick, I'd say. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't around when Fifty Shades of Grey came out. What happened there? We, we, it was a unanimous, deliberately avo yeah, avoided it. <laughs> it was a unanimous decision not to yeah. talk about it, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 It was, it was crazy. No, no, I, I, that's, that's fine. But I, I was, um, I was at work and people that I never realized had any interest in my podcast were going, what did you say about Fifty Shades of Grey? <laughs> <laughs> and I was going, wasn't on the podcast that week. Actually, they didn't review it. And I bet if you asked them, so did you go and see it? They'd all go, no, 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 I didn't know. No, no. <laughs> I don't know oh, one be, person that's going to be that's an, awful of, an awful lot of women that went to see it. Well, it, it did okay, right? It did okay. Yeah, and, it did like well, well enough in the, in the box office that they're going to make the next one. It was Valentine's weekend. Yeah. yeah. I didn't hear. I didn't hear anybody with a good word to say about it. In fairness, no, no. But then again, it's probably fashionable to shit on it from a height. Well, that's what I was going yeah. to say. You know, <laughs> those that have read it uh, yeah, as well, you know. So, I think what it was is that anyone who went there looking for like kinky, interesting sex came out going, "Should have just watched porn." And anyone who went there looking for a movie to watch went, "Should have just watched an actual film." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you think it fell between two stools? Fell like I'm, stools. I'm going to watch yeah. it. I'm definitely going to watch it. And I'll let you know when that happens. Um. But apparently the cinemas were pretty full with, with women for it in, in a lot of cases. I didn't get a chance to look at the box office mojo on, on that film, but anyone know what the skew was? It, I don't know what the skew was, but I think that it's, it's doing steady work and it got the, the win that weekend. I think it even got the um, win the following weekend, actually. 
I mean, I, I was just looking earlier and it made something like another eight or nine million just this week. Like, wow. So I'd say it's doing pretty well if, if it's making minimum that past since it's been out. American yeah. Sniper is still making four million. No way. Wow. Yeah. For Jesse Ventura. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's still more than Whiplash. <laughs> just let it go Mike um, so it's, it's, it's up on 150 million wow. 50 Shades of Grey wow it's in the romantic drama genre no. where it ranks <laughs> as the number 5 gross ever Sean tell us about House of Cards came out this week so the third season dropped uh, every episode up on Netflix um, and I've been a, a fan of House of Cards for the first two seasons and I think there's been a drop in quality. So for anyone who doesn't know, it's about Kevin Spacey um, as an incredibly ruthless politician. Um, and, the, and the show's managed to be surprising um, throughout, whether it's because of the storylines they've been using, some absolutely wonderful monologues from Spacey, or the fact that the show breaks the fourth wall. And in the first season, whenever Spacey did that, he was including you in his schemes, yeah. telling you how stupid everybody else was and how great we were. And then in the second season, when shit really gets going, he's a monster who can reach out of the TV and make you feel bad for liking watching the show. <laughs> but in the third season, they haven't made much use at all of the, the breaking the fourth wall technique, at least efficient use, in my opinion. So far, it just seems to be about a marriage being under pressure in the White House. And I want to see some people get pushed in, in front of fucking trains. That's what I want to see. <laughs> I want to see some murder and yeah. shit. How, I'm just not getting it so far. How far are you? Two, epi- two, two episodes two left, episodes. see? Two episodes left? Yep. Wow. They're cutting it fine. Yeah, I'm looking forward to starting that now, actually. Yeah, I, you know, I, I thought season one was great, but it kind of died a little bit about three quarters of the way through and then recovered again. And in season mm. two, I loved. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'll get back to you and see if I agree with you. Mm-hmm. Fair uh, enough. You saw a finale this week, Mike? I did. I saw the end of uh, the Sisterhood becoming nuns. It's uh, my, myself and Shona's dirty little secret. Um, so it was it was quite a short series, only six six episodes. But I thought it was probably well enough balanced because you had enough time to get to know everybody, but not so long that it's like Geordie Shore. And after twenty eight episodes, you just would you just fucking go home? You yeah, know? yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, overall very enjoyable, and the the finale itself. A bit surprising in terms of uh, how many of them actually decided to keep on with the program. Oh, that's what I was going to say to you. How, does someone win, or like, do they win yeah, a habit? Or yeah, you, you, you know, if you win, you get you eternal know. life. <laughs> and otherwise, you burn <laughs> in hell. <laughs> so the the final score was uh, uh, two are in, one is definitely out, and two maybes. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, do you think they'll do it like a? Big brother's little brother follow up type thing, or it could happen. Could happen. Um, Sisterhood too. Yeah, <laughs> I think the most surprising thing for me of the whole series was the the portrayal of the nuns. Like, uh, you're probably a little bit too young, but my memory of nuns is just as figures of fear, <laughs> you know, inflicting corporal punishment on kids. And probably uh, uh, older generations would share that uh, impression. That was before the famine, though, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but all the nuns in it seemed quite, you know, well-adjusted, pleasant people um, who were doing kind of useful things in society, um, you know, mm. like feeding the poor and shit. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, that was quite a good bit of PR on the church's side, I think. Um, so I'll, I'll give them kudos for that. So, so speaking of theology, mm-hmm. you did the last exorcism as well. <laughs> how, how do you keep finding these? I didn't realize there's so many made. I don't find them, they find me. <laughs> 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 yeah, th- that was awful shite, really. Because um, this is the last exorcism part two. There's absolutely no way to tell that that's going to be a bad movie. <laughs> Well, I was kind of shocked and appalled because The Last Exorcism Part 1 yeah. is one of my favorite horror movies of the last 10 years. Um, was it called Part 1? At the time, no. Oh. I, I'm uh, yeah. retroactively just naming it. it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so I was quite quite excited with the opportunity to see the sequel. 
But Jesus, you know, sometimes there's a sequel that shouldn't be made. This yeah. was one of them. It was just horrible horseshit. I can never guess that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Avoid a board. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Mark, did you see uh, Rousey versus Ngano? I did, yeah. Yeah, this was uh, the UFC last weekend. Um, and it was a highly anticipated uh, uh We're going to have a rush, rush you, Steve. I know, I know. <laughs> I've only got 10 seconds left to <laughs> go in blow by blow, which is about as long as the, the fight lasted. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was pretty amazing there, wasn't it? Uh-huh. you got to wonder, right, is she the most amazing female athlete we've ever seen, or is everyone else in the division shit? Mm. I don't think Zingano's that bad. I think she just got caught. I think it's a little from column A and a little from column B. I think really? Rousey is unquestionably... Amazing. Amazing she is, yeah. yeah. But there's nobody amazing for her to fight. If you go to the men's division, in every division, there's five to ten amazing fighters. Yeah. Um, and, like, and, you know, you think, if you think back to when Randy Couture was the most amazing man ever made. Yeah. And the other amazing guy was Fedor. Yeah. But, for some reason, we couldn't get the two of them to fight when it mattered. Yeah. Um, I, I feel bad for, um, for Rousey that she doesn't have somebody. She doesn't have an, uh, a, a capable nemesis. There's, there's, I see your one cyborg sister. What's her name? Yeah. She's, she's been mentioned again. She's a way category up, isn't she? Um, I think so. She's certainly not in the same category. No, she's not in the no, same category, no, no. but they're talking about making a super fight there. I think that might be the only fight for her, but I think that would be horrible. I think that would be just a mess. Is, is and I, not, I would probably still bet on Rousey, you know. Is Rousey not thinking she'll move up a category? or? I don't know. know. I don't yeah. know. I'd, I'd have thought that would be the next step for her, but why would she? You know, mm. <laughs> Massive bucks coming in at the moment. So Yeah. yeah. Anyway, I, I feel a bit sorry for her that she, she's a Batman who's yet to find her Joker. Yeah, I re- I'd, I'd love to see a rematch though. I think uh, Zingano did rush in a bit, and she just got caught. Uh, but again, uh, it, it might look. It, like, it might have been a minute later, but she still would have got caught. I think at the same time. No, you know? no. But <laughs> did you did you see what Rosie did? Like, yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She intercepted yeah, the yeah. throw, did uh, a cartwheel on her head, yeah. using a leg for leverage to flip your one while she went. <laughs> And wound up in top position. Like that, that's nothing to do with uh, Zingano rushing in. That's Rousey just being incredible. Like, and just thinking so fast. And then Rousey literally just kind of sat there for a second and went, I'm going to get her back now. Oh, hang on a minute. Here's an arm. She's totally giving me an arm. (laughs) Yeah. So, you know, like that was at at that point, you know, it was amazing. Amazing. Um, it was pretty cool. Yeah. Right. Uh, so next up, we have got some news. Katie Sackhoff was making headlines this week to the surprise of no one and the delight of Mike. Um, (laughs) In uh, an A.D. Shankar produced short film called Power Slash Rangers, um, uh, we got James Vanderbeek uh, and a few others, including Katie Sackhoff, reimagining the Power Rangers for an adult audience, uh, looking at a a post-apocalyptic world that is the result of giving teens with attitude gigantic fucking mechs that join together so they can fight monsters. Yeah. Um, so it makes sense, uh, the world being posited by Adi Shankar. Uh, Saban um, uh, spoke out, well, not spoke out against it, but uh, they, they, had, they had a copyright issue with the film being made, uh, and it was actually taken down for a bit before being put up again. Uh, I wasn't privy to the behind-the-scenes talks, but essentially, I think it would have been Saban going, we sell toys, stop having our toys say fuck you to people. <laughs> um, followed by Adi Shankar going, no, this is nothing to do with Power Rangers, which is an actual thing that he released, even though it's called Power Slash Rangers. Um, but uh, it, it's back up for anyone who wants to watch it. Uh, in fact, uh, very shortly thereafter, Shankar put up another short film, this time an animated one, based around the James Bond franchise. Uh and this one was called um, In Service of Nothing, featuring retired 007 haunted by past missions trying to navigate a modern world that no longer needs him, um, based around the Sean Connery likeness. And that, uh, as of reporting, is still 
impossible to look at because MGM have blocked it a lot. Maybe because they have more money or better lawyers than Saban, or maybe because James Bond is one of the most famous characters in the world fucking ever. Um, I would definitely uh, suggest anyone who has any interest to check out Adi Shankar's work. He also has a short film called Truth in Journalism, starring True Blood's Ryan Quentin as Eddie Brock, um, the human face of Venom. And he also had Thomas Jane come on to do a Punisher short film that had nothing to do with Marvel called Dirty Laundry. And they're all really, like, violent and class. Um, Our friend yeah. uh, Jason David Frank. Uh, Our friend Jason David Frank he, did uh, not enjoy no. uh, the gritty reboot of Power Rangers and did not agree with it at all. Yeah. Um, yeah, he, 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 he criticized the adult content, in fact. Mm-hmm. Um, but he was approached to be in it. And declined. I bet but, he was. Yeah, but he says he's a PG-13 guy. Mm-hmm. And the cuss words, the drugs, and all this other stuff, it doesn't fly with me. And he mm. says that, he, you know, he thinks the Power Rangers are still connected with kids. And he doesn't like the idea of doing a dark, gritty version in that context. I think there's definitely uh, grounds on both sides. Like, one is just a freedom issue, and the other is, uh, won't somebody please think of the children? Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I think I certainly understand Jason David Frank's uh, point of view. And if anyone wants more insight uh, into what kind of guy he is, they should check out the interview that I did with him last year at Comic-Con in our interview section or on our YouTube page, Is It a Bicycle? Um, um, the other the other Power Rangers were fine with it. Yeah, it the pink uh, Ranger, Amy Jo Johnson. Uh, mm, Kimberly. She, uh, <laughs> <laughs> she uh, gave the film her stamp of approval, uh, which Katie mm-hmm. Sackhoff uh, enthusiastically responded to on Twitter. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's good stuff. It'd be really interesting to see if anything came of it, but I, like, I just don't see it happening. Um, and in our in our next piece of news, um, remember when we discussed Spider-Man becoming a part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Yes. Well, the next step uh, is that the Marvel have reportedly found their, a new writer and director, and it's the same guy. Uh, Drew Goddard um, is going to be taking the helm And here's what we know about the movie, right? It's being reported by Latino Review and various other sources. There's not going to be a new origin story. Spider-Man exists. He's a guy and he exists. It'll be a new actor, probably an unknown. So I've already booked my plane ticket to L.A. Um, And a major part of the first film will involve Spider-Man fighting Iron Man and then trying to pass the audition to join the Avengers. So it's a kind of Avengers boot camp montage. (laughs) I would be so excited if they can get a kind of funny guy, like a funny, charismatic guy, like an Andrew Garfield, to play Peter Parker at a high school age, and then for him to be making fun of Robert Downey Jr. and Robert Downey Jr. to do the same. I'll watch that shit for days. Like, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Um, but I'm incredibly excited, and I hope to hear more uh, announcements in the future. Um, Steve, you had a, a slightly more somber uh, piece of news from during the week. Yeah, um, Leonard Nimoy passed, which was, uh, I don't know, I was quite surprised to hear it. I didn't realize, uh, mm. actually, that he was as old as he was. Yeah. Uh, I knew he was up there, but, uh, you know, I didn't realize, what was it, 83 or? Mm. 83, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, that was, uh, that was pretty sad. And of course, uh, he has got so many fans from, for so many different reasons. Um, it was a, a huge thing, uh, not just on social media. Um, but uh, his funeral was a massive affair as well, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, he'll be missed. Yeah. He he was working up until a year before this as well. Like, Leonard Nimoy was work Like, uh, the yeah. last things I can think of him doing were obviously Star Trek 1 and 2. Uh, Fringe, he was in often, and then he was even a voice actor in, in its final or second last season. He was in Transformers 3 as a voice, for Christ's sake. Like he's been, oh, right. he was putting out as much work as anybody. Yeah, yeah. Uh, at the age of 80, 81, 82, 83. I think that's why I was surprised he was that old. Too. Yeah. Um, mm. Actually, the nice. He has a fair idea to look at him, though. The coolest tribute I saw. Uh, I don't know if it was a reel or a mock-up, but uh, it had somebody supposedly in the International Space Station doing the V sign out the window. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, over planet Earth. I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's almost as cool as the tweet that uh, I sent out when I heard the news, which. Uh, Featured a quote from Spock on Star Trek, the original series. Change is the essential process of all existence. And uh, I followed up by saying, so long, Spock. We are now and will always be your friend. Nice. All of you, all of you people listening right now, 
thanks for not retweeting that and not letting me go viral. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was going to be the one. I'm sure of it. <laughs> it was timely. It was poignant. It captured the emotion. I had the zeitgeist in less than 256 characters. Where were my retweets at? <laughs> I even logged into the Is It A Bicycle Twitter and retweeted it from there thinking, I know the legions of Is It A Bicycle fans who appreciate my good humor, they'll retweet me. Or maybe Steve, my good buddy Steve, who's always on Twitter nowadays. Nope. As, as Is It A Bicycle, you got there before me. <laughs> that was the problem, I think. There. What about my good buddy Sean, the master of social media? He's going to retweet me, no, right? I, He's I got agree. my back. More people, more people should have read that, all right, Jeff. <laughs> yeah, was, didn't, didn't see it. Sean, you're going to say? Um, uh, yeah, uh, you guys were talking about a, a, a sequel. There's a sequel happening to Blade Runner, uh, and, a, and Harrison Ford is apparently signed on to revitalize yet a third franchise nobody thought there would ever be a sequel to. Indiana Jones and uh, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull worked out great, obviously. Um, and then the next Star Wars is, is coming out, and everyone's very excited about that. Why not do Blade Runner 2? Are you guys excited about this? Oh, yeah. I am, actually. No. Mm-hmm. I am. Well, if it's anyway as good as the original, which yeah. is which is probably a big ask. But a huge ask. A huge ask. But, but still, if you don't still, ask, you don't get. Yeah. <laughs> and it's set, what, um, several decades after you, after the original. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, it would need well, to be because the first one was set in 2015. <laughs> mm. well, was it 19 or 15? I thought it was 19. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it was pretty close. Mm. No, actually, it was 19 because uh, Back to the Future... The future is on October 21st of this year. Uh, okay. <laughs> so we'll have to celebrate that with some uh, things they got right and wrong, I guess. Um, the last uh, bit that I had there was uh, Rose Leslie, from who, who we know from Game of Thrones, I mm-hmm. suppose is her biggest, most famous role at the moment, Ygritte. Um, she'll be in Luther in a two-part special. Um, they're mm-hmm. looking for someone that c- could carry a dark and kind of... Not quite Moriarty, but a little bit eviler and a little bit flirtier kind of character, I think. <laughs> okay. so, so I think they've nailed it. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to that, actually. So that's it. Uh, let's move on and start with the first of our movies, which was uh, 71. Uh, 71 stars Jack O'Connell, Sam Reed and Sean Harris. Um, it's about a young British Army private who's uh, gets separated from his platoon on a uh, house raid in a Catholic section of Belfast in 1971. While doing this uh, house arrest or raid, a riot breaks out, as it used to happen. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so he gets separated and he's stuck in uh, Catholic Belfast and he's trying to make his way back to his barracks. So that's pretty much how it starts. So, Mike. Uh, yes, I saw this. Um, this is... A good movie, but I had some serious reservations with it, primarily... Let's start with the good, Mike. Uh, and I always like talking about the shit part. I know you do. Let's start with the good. <laughs> You're ruining my quan. <laughs> okay, the good part. Uh, Mr. O'Connell is very good, very believable in the role. Isn't he brilliant? Yeah. yeah. Um, I enjoyed him a lot more in this than I did in Startup. Did you? Yeah. All right. I thought he was too in your face in startup. Oh, he was very feral, wasn't he? Yeah, 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 yeah. And I suppose, like, to be a paratrooper, you have to be kind of feral too. So he was, he was yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> probably a, a good choice for the role. Yeah. Um. Yeah. At no point did I not believe who he was, which yeah. is uh, a frequent problem I have with with movies like this. And I thought he did a great job in it. Um. The other cast members, I thought, did equally well. Um, a lot that we know from Love Hate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I thought the the way it was shot was excellent. It really captured the the kind of shitty seventies look. Yeah, and particularly the Belfast shitty seventies look. Yeah, <laughs> like it, it, I don't know where they found the the streets and whatnot. But Liverpool it really, was it Liverpool? Yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that explains a lot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I thought, yeah, I, I suppose I, I didn't really notice the music, so I can't say that was a huge plus. I did actually. Did you? Yeah, yeah. and I think it really added to the tension. Of, mm-hmm. It was just so well timed, if you know what I mean. Okay. And it yeah. eased up and disappeared when you didn't need it. Right, right. Yeah, right. you know that kind of way. It was yeah. just on cue. Yeah. You know. Yeah. It, it didn't interfere, and that's probably why you didn't notice it because it was so mm-hmm. well done. Oh, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
It was so good. I didn't it was notice. So it. good. You didn't notice. It. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. a new one. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, can I talk about what I didn't like yet? Yeah, go on. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Um, my main problem was the length of the movie. Um, it's ninety minutes, give or take, but they have an A story, a B story, and a C story. Yeah. To try and fit into that, and there's eight to ten fairly major characters plus another ten to fifteen speaking parts. So yeah. you have a whole shit heap of people to try and keep track of who's doing what, who belongs to what, who thinks what, and that gets very hard, um, you know, just to to make sense of it all, because um, it's coming at you scene after scene after scene. You know, we're switching. Who's this guy again? Uh, who does he hate again? You know, that kind of yeah. thing. It, it, I think they could have simplified the movie or made it longer to to bring in those additional story elements. Right. Um, therein lies my problem with the movie. Ah. Ah. Did you feel that yourself? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not a bit, actually. No, actually, I, I, before I get to the good bits, mm-hmm. because I found more good bits than bad bits in this. Actually, mm-hmm. there's only one bit that, uh, that I thought was a little weak, but mm-hmm. it's not the first movie that we've seen it in, and we do see it quite a lot, mm-hmm. is when children speak like they're adults. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That they, they say something or do something, and you go, nah, a kid wouldn't have, wouldn't have done that, you yeah. know? Yeah. So there's, at one stage, she meets, uh, uh, Corey McKinley. It's played mm-hmm. by Corey McKinley. It's a little loyal, loyalist rioting child. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, the, and Corey's trying to get, uh, our, uh, I don't know if you could call him, I can't really call him a hero, but, uh, <laughs> Pro- protagonist. <laughs> protagonist, yeah. <laughs> to, uh, to follow him. Mm-hmm. And it's just the way he says it and then walks off. I just went, ah, mm. that, w- that, you know, no child would have done that. There's no way. Funny, that didn't jar on me that bad. That, that yeah. it just straight away just went, ow, you know, yeah. and then I just sort of forgot about it. Let it, you know, mm. just let it go. Yeah. But because the rest of the movie was so yeah. strong. Um, see, I, just, I could see a little cheeky shite taking advantage of his position in society to get what he wanted. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which, we, which we saw, he's brilliant later on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he was absolutely brilliant. But uh, just that moment, I just thought, mm-hmm. uh, okay. because we didn't really know the character as well at that yeah. stage, you know. So, so it broke your belief. Yeah, yeah. just for that okay. split yeah. second, I just went, mm-hmm. ow. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but then immediately in the next scene, he was a kid again. Mm-hmm. Uh, just some actions that he did. Yeah. Yeah, complete kid. But anyway, at the start of the movie, it's, it's a roller coaster. Mm-hmm. I mean, from the first half hour, it's just amazing. When uh, Jack O'Connor arrives in Belfast, um, they're all green. Mm-hmm. Even his commanding officer is a child, really, yeah. uh, teenager as well. And uh, so they go to support the RUC, who are doing this house raid, and they have to go and back them up. And the commander says, let's not wear all our riot gear, because that sends out the wrong message. <laughs> right. <laughs> Right, so they're wearing soft hats and all the rest of it. But um, it's when they get there and you see uh, all the women on the street that come down, start banging dustbin lids on the ground, and you can see Jack O'Connor looking around going, what the fuck <laughs> is going on? What? Mm-hmm. He just has no clue, yeah. and he's way out of his depth. Yeah. They and, did a great job of building the tension oh, in that scene. Yeah, and, th- and that just, from mm-hmm. there for the next, mm-hmm. I don't know, hour? Or yeah. more, it just mm-hmm. it's relentless. Yeah. But it's brilliant that not only can he is he the action type guy and can handle it all, but then you see him like he <coughs> he's not coping with it very well at yeah. all. You know, which is great as well. You know, so uh, I I think they've 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 hit a nail on the head with this. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's pretty realistic. It's not mm-hmm. like you're. It's not a diddly eye movie. It's not like a a view from someone outside of Ireland. Mm-hmm. Uh, what they're what they read in the news and think it was like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? They're, because that can happen very easily. Yeah. Um, it's certainly not. Uh, what was that Tom Cruise movie set in Dublin with uh, Nicole Kidman? Oh, far and away. Far and away. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you know that's that's the yeah. polar opposite to yeah, this. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's great. It's a great action movie. It's a great action movie. Um, but it's more than an action movie. You know. Uh, I watched it with someone who's not a big fan of action movies and mm-hmm. really, really enjoyed it just because mm-hmm. the tension was there and uh, they don't go too deep into politics. Mm-hmm. They actually, they don't go into politics at all. Mm-hmm. All they, they explain is that this is the loyalist area mm-hmm. and this is the Catholic area. That was actually hilarious. That was their military briefing. The before map, yeah. Here's the map. Now, <laughs> yeah. don't go in there yeah. <laughs> because that's an IRA stronghold. Yeah. But there's, there's some shocking moments as well that uh, for those who 
don't realize how violent it was and how flippant mm. or not flippant it's war you know mm-hmm. but how uh in- incredibly violent it was mm-hmm. uh in those times but like people have said it didn't really really kick off till the following year mm. um yeah they were just getting warmed up really yeah, stage, yeah. it's just yeah. In- incredible and i was laughing at uh, well it's kind of I thought it was quite funny. Uh, on uh, the way people were explaining it, I saw some people from outside of Ireland and people from in Ireland discussing it on a forum. And someone said, why did I call it the Troubles? I mean, it was a war. And he said, well, to put it in perspective, World War II was called the emergency, you know, <laughs> <laughs> in Ireland. So, so uh, um, yeah, there's just sort of a, a turn of phrase there. Understatement. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so you didn't, I, I get the feeling you didn't find it a, or feel it was as strong. As I I thought it could have been stronger yeah. if they had left bits out. Um, right. You know, I thought I thought it was a great chase movie. Yeah. You know, um, there was a lot of excitement and and the, the tension was consistently well done. Yeah. Um, it's just a, it's confusing, particularly for somebody who wouldn't be from Ireland. Yeah. Um, who didn't grow up watching the news about all this shite. Yeah. They'd be sitting there, I would imagine, thinking, "What the hell is this?" You know. Yeah. Because um, there isn't a whole lot of explaining being done on, yeah. on the various it's sub doing, characters. Uh, it, it opened in the US, I believe, last weekend, and it's mm-hmm. doing pretty well. Um, yeah, yeah uh, reviews are good as well. So, yeah, an unusual perspective as well. Like almost all the genre of you know troubles movies are from the shall we say the Republican perse- perspective. Yeah, uh, very rare to see one from the British side, um, where they're not being. Uh, where they're not being, you know, demonized and whatever. It's just, this is a guy, let's follow him, you know. So uh, I thought that was interesting. Uh, who directed this? Uh, a guy called Jan Demange. Yeah. Um, oh, yes. Uh, it's his, uh, uh, his debut, uh, mm-hmm. like, let's say, mainstream, big film debut. Okay. I remember reading about that already. Yeah. 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 So it's. I think it's a brilliant first effort. So is he a kind of an indie background or... Uh, yeah, I think, and, and uh, some shorts and that kind of thing. So... Um, Mm, yeah. yeah, it's a fair effort for a first shot, you know. It is, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, he's so I think it was 2006. He did a couple mm-hmm. of things that were of note: um, Headspace and Incomplete. Mm-hmm. I would say go see it mm-hmm. because the cast is very strong, the story is really strong, the script is really strong. Uh, as we said, the production values are brilliant. He, I think he nails the 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 environment as well. Um, so yeah. Uh, it didn't seem that like a long movie at all. It seemed to have zip through as well. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, I suppose it's, it's just constant, you know, what's going, what's happening next. Yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Without the tricks of Bourne. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah great base to it. And uh, uh, I thought it was a nice choice to make him like, uh, you know, he's coming from a superhero special forces kind of a background or whatever, yeah. um, or elite regiment. But... He's fucked. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so he's, yeah. he's not doing fucking parkour all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, shooting 40 people, you know, with uh, yeah. <laughs> with one single bullet. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I thought Yippee that was good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it showed his humanity quite well, I thought. Yeah. Um, okay, what would, you, what would you give this? Um, I'd like to give it more, but I'm going to stick it a six. Oh, wow, really? Yeah. Um, mm. I think it's it's a worthwhile movie. Yeah. Um, but... As I said, I had problems with. Okay, uh, this is a definitely an eight for me. Okay, yeah, uh, it's a yeah strong eight. Yeah, really enjoyed this, and I say go see it. Uh, next up, we've got the first of our TV. Sean, tell us about the Odd Couple. Sure, um, the Odd Couple uh, is a a sitcom based on a play of the same name. It's about <laughs> it's about these two people, right? And they're different from each other. Yep. Yeah, so The Odd Couple um, <laughs> is basically about... Uh, so, uh, Matthew Perry stars in this uh, as the messy one, and he likes women, right? Uh, and he had a divorce a while back, but he doesn't care. He's going to do kisses with women. Also, it is the second sitcom he has done in two years where he has played a sports radio DJ. Fun fact. Uh, and then Oscar's wife finally uh, uh, pulls the trigger and is like, Oscar, you're going to, we're not going to be married. Let, we're getting divorced. So he shows up at his buddy's doorstep. And then it's like, whoa, a slob and a neat freak living together? Are they going to learn from each other? 
or are they going to implode? And how will their love lives end up? I don't know. What do you think? Well, Mike, what do you think? Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. <laughs> it's more of a sit than a sitcom. Really. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> as soon as you hear the canned laughter, you just know it's fucking going down here from here. Um, this was dreadful from start to end. Um, you know, and I, I did kind of like Chandler, but I'm starting to like him less and less as I see him in other stuff. <laughs> Um, I mm-hmm. just wish he'd stay retired after making a million dollars an episode for nine years. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's just painful from, you know, from the get go. The, the jokes such as they are, are really obvious. Um, you know, they're, they're really going for low hanging fruit. I know it's a pilot and they're trying to get people in, but oh God, no, <laughs> it's, it's too much for me. It's awful, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's awful. Mm. It's, it's I, I don't really want to say a lot more about it. <laughs> it's, it's, what, it's, what I am, um, what I was going to say actually in response to Mike is, yep. so canned laughter turns you off, but you watch Two and a Half Men for how long? <laughs> yeah, about twelve years. Oh, say. Dick. <laughs> so no, but genuinely, like I'm wondering what is the difference between the two because low hanging fruit. That's Two and a Half Men. Well, like l- lowest common denominator, Two and a Half Men. Two guys living together, one of whom is good with women, one of whom is bad with women. Two and a half men. Well, you see, the thing about two and a half men was that Charlie Sheen is real. You know, they basically just gave him a different name in two and a half men and said, do whatever you want, Charlie. We'll just film it. <laughs> he, he is still called Charlie as well, which is fair. Yeah, yeah. So is it that it's only because you like to hear somebody say shit that you actually think that they would say in real life? Is that the, like is that the difference? That's probably a fair point in this particular case. Um, yeah. And I always enjoy listening to Charlie Sheen talk. He could just talk about the weather and I'd fucking find it hilarious. Because I'm very often like that with Matthew Perry. Uh-huh. And every new show he's come out with, I've liked, given it a thriller on the podcast and wanted to see it succeed. Uh-huh. And everyone without fail is cancelled after either 6, 13 or 22 episodes. Oh. And I can't go through that again with another Matthew Perry sitcom. Like, I can't have that happen. And here's the problem as well. This show is, it, like, it, it's based around one of the original situation comedies. Mm-hmm. Put two people in a room together that don't want to be there and then see what comes out of that. There's a reason that Sheldon is really just a version of Oscar. Mm-hmm. Uh, fast forward however many years between the two. You know what I mean? Like, that's what they're doing with this. So I don't know if if they can really have this show compete when the different, you know what I mean, when when there's nothing like new about it. Because I haven't seen many changes made from the original, except they're trying to be more biting with the humor, I feel. Like you've got, like uh, there are two girls in it and one of the girls essentially accuses the other of being bulimic because, come on, she eats a lot of food and she still looks like that. And I was like, wow, that's like a pretty extreme thing to say it like whatever 8 p.m. at night uh, mm-hmm. trying to appeal to a family demographic but I, like I, I don't know I didn't think it was good but mm-hmm. I also think that they're trying to make something along the lines of a two and a half men mm-hmm. and I don't think that this is worse than two and a half men like I genuinely think mm-hmm. this is about the same quality ah uh, no I, I well I suppose it's it's down to a, a taste thing, you know. Yeah, I didn't like either of them. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You see, you you like Ma- Matthew Perry from the start, so that biases you that way. I like Charlie Sheen from the start, that biases me the other way. Um, so, yeah, I don't have that warm, fuzzy feeling coming to this. Mm. You know, I'm, I'm, I don't know, I'm kind of sick of uh, Chandler playing Matthew Perry at this stage. We need, to, <laughs> <laughs> we need a change. You know, he's always the... I don't know, his, situa- his comedy always seems to be where he's aghast or confused comedy. You know, someone mm-hmm. says something, he's just like, huh? You know, mm-hmm. and that's the punchline nearly in a lot of the jokes, which uh, I'm kind of tired of now at this stage. I don't I don't really think he's changed up his moves all that much. No. But the, the, the last show that he had, uh, Go On, which was, it had no laugh track, and it was about him trying to get over the death of his wife. That show was just written better, and it used him in ways that he hadn't been used before. Yeah, I like remember that. Yeah, you're still right. Had the idea, yeah. It still had the idea of him needing people to like him, and hence wanting to be funny all the time, but yeah. also not really liking people. Yeah. But here, what we're getting is a really diluted, safe version of that. 
And no, I don't think the show is good, but I still think the writing is as good as any other canned laughter sitcom I've seen recently. Like, genuinely. Yeah. I think the performances are as good as well. Like, they're, again, very safe. Good comedic timing. Um, you know, they know how to gurn for the cameras and twist up their faces to fake a cry. I don't know. Like, I, I, I don't see this show being worse, which is probably unfortunate that that's the best recommendation I can give it. Did you think it was funny? I did laugh out loud once. Once? I thought it was, like, fine. Yeah. yeah, but one time I actually did laugh. I, I was trying later on in the day to remember what it was that I laughed at, but it was some exchange between um, between Matthew Perry and, and Thomas uh, Lennon, between uh, the two roommates, and it was just, they were doing it back and forth for a while, and I was like, and then somebody said something, I, it might have been the line... Um, Oh, it might have been a line about where Matthew Perry, it's just a really basic word reversal joke where Oscar says something like, um, oh, like what you really miss is, is, uh, you've got whoever it is, what, what there is inside you that is coming out right now is, you know, like something beautiful. And he, he goes, yeah, but I was about to be inside a beautiful woman. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> there was some, it was about like, to be just, about, it was inside well something scripted. beautiful. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was as well scripted as any of those other shows, Big Bang Theory, etc. So I don't know what to say about it beyond that. Yeah, I suppose, well, the only one of those shows that I actually watch is probably Two and a Half Men. <laughs> you know? really? Yeah, I don't watch Big Bang Theory and, and pretty well anything like that. Um, you know, I was willing to give Enlisted a shot, but, uh, they fucking cancelled it on me. <laughs> what can you do? Okay, so uh, thriller filler. For me, uh, it's it's going to be the first Matthew Perry show in maybe four years that I'm going to give a filler to. So it'll probably last forever. <laughs> Mike, no doubt about it. Filler all the way. Filler all around. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um. Yeah, it's filler for me, obviously. Okay. Uh. Next up, we have the second of our movies, which is uh, Focus. Mark, do you want to tell us about Focus? Focus. Yeah. Yes, folks, I am still here. So Focus <laughs> is a Welcome back, Mark. latest Will Smith movie. The trailer would have you believe that it is along the lines of Ocean's Eleven, where he plays a con artist who's working some kind of con, and the are likely to be hijinks, and the opening of the film kind of brings us along that direction too. Focus. Mike, can I uh, can I can I put in there, Steve? Sorry, yeah. I wanted. I just wanted to get in. I watched this with my wife. Yes, and she she liked it fine, right? But she enjoyed it so much more knowing that you guys were all going to have to watch it too. <laughs> <laughs> with that in mind, where you go, Mike? Have at it. I think I said it earlier about another program. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Oh really? <laughs> yeah, I absolutely hated this movie. Oh no! Yeah. This is meant to be Will Smith's big return to being action comedy drama. No, thing. no, 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 no. no. Um, that was the lie, Steve. Yeah. So you have Will Smith; he's a good-looking guy, and you have Margot Robbie; she's a good-looking girl, and you've no script. So any time it starts to become really obvious that the script is shite, they just kind of focus in on one or other of their faces. So that you get mesmerized by their good looks and then you forget about the fact that the movie is shit. <laughs> um, it, it starts off, the first, the first act is pretty good. They do a good job of, you know, setting up the characters and the basic situation. And there's a very, very well done kind of high point at the end of that, um, with a lot of tension. And it's, it's kind of it's it's working off your lack of knowledge about the guy's character, um, because at that point of the movie you don't know enough about him to judge what's happening exactly, and I thought that was really really well done, um, but after that point of the movie it's just um, skydiving downhill, <laughs> you know it it lags really badly in the middle, um, to the point that you you can barely stay awake. Um, because just nothing of any interest really happens. You know, they, they do try and do some of the, you know, the cute scams and look at how well organized stuff that we have from Ocean's Eleven. Um, but it's, it's just boring. And then, 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, and then you get to the, you know, the final part of the movie and you think, okay, the middle was dreadful, but surely something exciting has to happen at the end. <laughs> there has to be some danger. Yeah. <laughs> and there has to be a great escape. Yeah. Yeah. Things have to go terribly pear, pear shaped and they do. But at this point, you've stopped caring about the characters and you've realized that nothing that comes out of their mouths is going to be in any ways true. So you're automatically opposite thinking anything that happens. You know? Right. Oh, he's yeah. in danger. Oh, obviously he's not in danger because he's a fucking liar. <laughs> you know? And um, the, the, the denouement is just so fucking preposterous. You know, it'd be fine in a Monty Python movie or something. <laughs> But in a supposedly semi-realistic action-y type thing, it's just fucking horseshit. Right. Yeah. And, you know, Not they... Bad, huh? So you're saying the ending is predictable, Mike, are you? The ending is eminently predictable. Um, and not in a good way. You know, sometimes, sometimes the m- movie makers, they'll give you an ending that you want. And in that way, it's predictable. But you're kind of satisfied because they, you're kind of thinking to yourself, that's how I would have finished it. Yeah, I feel good about myself, you know. <laughs> I could do this. Yeah, yeah. Um, but other times they give you the ending that you're expecting and you're thinking, ah, oh God, ah, oh God, could you not have come up with something better than that? And this is definitely a case of that. Um, I don't know, Mark, did you have that kind of a feel? Or? Well, I, I don't think anything you said about it is untrue, Mike. I, I have to say straight away. The difference between us, though they are many and varied, when it comes to films is I can still enjoy something like this. So... I thought one thing that Will Smith really nailed, um, and what was, what was the leading lady's name? Margot Robbie. Margot. Oh, God, what a terrible name. Margot and Will. Um, what a terrible couple name, like. But anyway, <laughs> let's move on. Luckily, that's not what they were called in the movie. Their chemistry was excellent. Their whole love story was very believable. Um, just palpable chemistry. It's good stuff. Um, better writing would have helped, but I thought the two of them did a great job playing that side of it. Um, they do kind of lie to you about this film a bit in the trailer. Like, this is a chick flick. It is not Ocean's Eleven. Um, and it makes, once the film starts, it makes no bones about that. This is about love <laughs> and how it's affected by people who are involved in lying, right? Which is, you know, it's, it's, it's not a new story, but it, it you know, that doesn't matter when you're making a rom-com, essentially. Like, um, I think, I don't want to go over the same ground you've covered, Mike. It, it has a lot of problems. The Ocean's Eleven stuff, I quite enjoyed. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was great big gaps filled with uh, some writing that probably wasn't strong enough to maintain momentum. And I quite enjoyed the ending. I thought they maintained the tension pretty well, but that was just, that's just where we differ, I guess. Fair um enough. Because you, you, you can't assume that just because Will is incredibly, incredibly good looking that he's going to be okay. <laughs> uh, so although it was, it, it was predictable, you're right there too. Um, I, I did enjoy the film. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I'm sorry I feel this way about it because I do like Mil- Will Smith and I generally like his movies and I really felt bad for him for being in this movie. But he's way richer than I am, so I think he'd get over it. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm. So do we want to... M- oh, Sean, what are you going to say? Um, one reason this movie was going to be important, re- regardless of critical reception and, and acclaim of that kind, was the last movie people remember Will Smith for was After Earth, which was the one where everyone went, wait a second. <laughs> what are you doing, Will? You're the most bankable name in U.S. box. What are, what are you doing, man? Why are you making a movie that's not about you? It's about your kid. What are you trying to do? Be a good father? What's your problem, <laughs> Smith? Um, which uh, And that movie ended up limping into to doubling its budget, which for a blockbuster with Will Smith is actually bad. But this film um, made $31.3 million for a 32-territory rollout, which sounds good really isn't because that's like including loads of places like that's not just a domestic box office it's it's what they did now and that's going to go down week on week so it'll it'll end up making it'll be one of the least profitable will smith movies ever and i think what he wanted i think what a lot of people wanted was for the will smith name to bounce back 
to being another headliner where you put him in a movie and that movie makes a fuck ton of money. Hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, if you did something about vampires at the end of the world or something, you'd be fine. You know? <laughs> or exorcisms. Well, <laughs> well um, w- the next thing that I can think of involving uh, Will Smith and Margot Robbie, I believe, is a movie that we've reported on uh, called Suicide Squad. So it looks like Will might be trying to hop on the superhero bandwagon, or should I say super villain bandwagon. Sounds like a much more promising uh, line of work for him. Maybe. I, I'm excited anyway. I might have to see Focus, you know. I might have to see it just to see if, if you know, he can get the freshness back. Don't say I didn't warn you. Fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> uh, so with that, would you mark it? Uh, I'll give this a, a fairly poor four. Four. Yeah. Mark. Uh, I enjoyed it more than Mike, but I'm under no illusions as to the substance of it. I think it's a five for me. It's just about average. Ooh, right. Um, right, I might give that one a skip. Okay. Um, um, so last up, we have a uh, second of our TV, which is uh, Last Man on Earth. Sean. Will Forte plays the last man on Earth. <laughs> There's a reason that high-concept pitches very often get made, right? (laughs) Liar, liar. He's a lawyer. He can't lie for a day. Very easy to just say that shit. Snakes on a plane. (laughs) You're done. You can just move the fuck. Waterworld. (laughs) You can keep, like, you can do it. It's phone booth. Whenever you feel like it, you just need to put shit together and you're ready to go. This This movie... This is about them going in to make a pitch about it. Yeah. Right, you've got five yeah. seconds. Uh, yeah. Last Man on Earth, sold. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Bean, the pitch for Mr. Bean, or, or no, the pitch for Blackadder was Rowan Atkinson said he'll do a sitcom. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you can get the star and an idea, then you're ready to go. So really what, what people were worried about with this was, wait a minute, so like just one guy and then... But then what happens? Yeah, what do you know. do next? Yeah. How do you make that funny for a season? Never mind four or five. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, in this episode, we just saw Will Forte driving around initially around the US. Sorry, they did build it as the last man on Earth, mm-hmm. but I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure he didn't leave the States. Yeah, season three, Steve. And also, he would need uh, to learn how to fly a plane or drive a boat. Mm-hmm. Or drive to Mexico or mm. Canada or mm. anyway, we'll leave that out of yeah. it. Yeah, brain at the door. Mm. Uh, so uh, Kirsten Schall is it from as we yes. know from um, the Flight of Concord's biggest fan <laughs> uh, is also in this, um, and she's brilliant in it. Um, uh, I, I liked uh, the way this made comparisons uh, with um, what do you call it, Tom Hanks and his Castaway. Lo- yeah, exactly, Castaway. And uh, I did like the way they explored what would you do if you were the last man on Earth and you're a bit of a messer. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. The way he starts, I don't know, just being flippant about stuff and breaking mm-hmm. up stuff and not tidying up stuff mm-hmm. and just it's it's just uh, using mm-hmm. stuff in the most disgusting ways and <laughs> so on. Um, but it it's quite funny, and I'm glad they didn't keep doing that. Mm-hmm. They only explored it for like the first. 10 minutes or so, 15 minutes of it. Um, but uh, yeah, you could see him getting increasingly, increasingly bored. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, that, uh, I kind of enjoyed this. I don't know if I'd watch a full season of it. I think, I think I'm hooked enough to watch another episode though, just to see. Because I did like, uh, obviously this is, a, you know, a, an episode one and two release. Uh, mm-hmm. kind of a thing so um, so we did sort of I did just sort of go straight through into the second episode which I in my head was it was all the first episode you know it was, it's mm-hmm. the pilot in my head um, so I, I think I'm going to watch episode uh, three um, because I did like the interaction uh, between the, the two people and uh, want to see where it goes because it's very 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 funny in pra- in places uh, see, I was kind of tinged by having watched The Odd Couple. Oh, yeah. You know, I was <laughs> thinking this so is anything can be better than this. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I was thinking this is kind of odd couple except in a post-apocalyptic world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mike, Mike, situation, 
Comedy situation: two people have to be with each other. Comedy: they don't want to. <laughs> Literally, they, that is the pitch from a lot of sitcoms. You can boil it down to that. And yeah. at the end of the day, situation comedy is pretty broad. The situation is there's nobody else, yeah. and the comedy yeah. is there's nobody else. Yeah. Oh, we um, must mention, I, we must mention why there's nobody else as well. We haven't. Uh talked about that right? oh yeah there was a virus, a virus they don't need yeah. to tell us why and i just believe them yeah and yeah. The, there's no like bodies lying around the place or anything it's it's just like the world is deserted yeah so. i i kind of really wanted to see the series where that happened <laughs> yeah. i see the pre-apocalyptic yeah, comedy yeah. Is that it? <laughs> yep. um so there's a lot of comedy in this that involves absolutely no dialogue at all and that's refreshing and that's innovative and it's really funny like, uh, at a certain point, the, like, it opens with him in an RV, literally just going, hello, <laughs> hello, <laughs> just out of the, like, megaphone speakers of the thing. And already I was laughing. Yeah. And then you see that inside the RV, he's got, like, the Declaration of Independence. He's got, like, uh, the Thriller outfit, the Michael Jackson. Like, he's got so much shit that you would definitely go get. <laughs> he's got two Oscars. For some reason, two yeah, specific yeah, Oscars. Yeah. Isn't there a Stormtrooper helmet in the front cab as well? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's loads of shit. He's that got he's loads just, of uh, Rembrandts and Monets <laughs> and uh, dinosaur <laughs> skulls and all sorts of things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. It's hilarious. And he's an average guy. This is one of those shows that puts an average person in an extraordinary situation as yeah. opposed to him being an extraordinary individual. And that's the perfectly right choice. And it's exactly what we would do. Like trying to see a guy cope with how to poo and have it not end badly when there's no one to like take care of any essential services. Great. Like fucking class. And that's just the basics of everyday life. That's, that's your first like 15, 18 minutes and he's completely alone and by himself. And it is sad. Like at a certain point, it's really sad. And they go through the motions every now and then they'll go. Yeah. So you probably expect this. So we're going to show it to you. And they do lampshade that when they talk about castaway and, and talking to balls and how they develop that idea. Yeah, but at a certain point, it gets sad for a solid like three or four minutes, and you go fuck. Like there's a moment yeah. where he goes, "I'm gonna be fine. I can do this." Five months later, and he's ready to fucking kill himself. Yeah, yeah. And then when he when he sees smoke and he drives towards it, and it's like, oh yeah, it's called the last man on earth. And just the very idea of there being a woman now, and he hasn't seen one in two years, is funny. And the fact that she is who she is is amazing. Like trying to correct his grammar, trying to get him to stop at stop signs, and he's very clearly only doing it because he really wants the ride. Oh my god! Yeah. Like, and also because he's never heard anyone speak for eighteen months, and he's fine with it being bullshit. And I really like the second episode as well, even more so because now we know what kind of shit's going to happen. Like the preview for the third episode is him having some kind of a bachelor party. <laughs> Because it looks like he's going to have to spend the rest of his life with this woman. Yeah. It's, it, it's great. It's so, it's the, the options for it being funny are so diverse. And all of the money they saved by not employing a full cast of people has been put into clearing streets at 6 a.m. in the morning and in destroying cars, yeah. aquariums, and loads of shit. Yeah. Um, the best joke for me, and it completely took me by surprise, <laughs> was at one point he walks towards a building shoots the window like he takes yeah. out a gun shoots the window as if it's fucking nothing yeah. and I I pissed myself yeah. I went oh my god yeah. of course he has a fucking gun yeah, yeah. and it's amazing that it didn't matter that he just shot that thing yeah. like and th- and the ways that guns come up every now and then it's just fucking amazing I love it it's great um, and sorry go on I was just gonna say I can predict the show I think it's definitely gonna go a full first season and at the end of the first season an athletic not disgusting man is going to show up, and I'll watch that show for another season. No bother. Yeah, I think there's even more to it. Okay, but that's only because I was looking at uh, IMDb during the week to see, and I just hit on the cast. You bollocks! Yeah. Shut the fuck up! Right now, <laughs> cheating bastard! <laughs> I don't like the idea of their. Oh, you know what? I'm going to say it's flashbacks, so it's fine. Yeah. No spoilers. <laughs> Oh, no, I, sorry, I, can't, I can't spoil it because I, I don't know. <laughs> um, did you did you recognize the, let's say, not spoiling, 
let's say the girl in his vision. Mm. Uh, no. She was from True Detective. Yes. Yeah. She was, uh, what's her name? Alexandra Daddario. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we've seen her in True Detective. She was a very attractive lady. Um, that's, oh, uh, thanks. She's in an American TV show and she's attractive. Easy. <laughs> I know exactly who you're talking about. No, I was going to say she was the very attractive <laughs> lady who's having the affair uh, with, um, what's his name? From Cheers. Jesus. Woody Harrelson. Woody Harrelson, thank you. So, so yeah. it's down to two or three people then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's not blonde. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm going to give this thriller. I'm going to watch another one because I, I, I want to know what happens. I'm going to give this thriller as well. It's made my list. I'm a little bit on the fence because I really don't know how they can keep this fun and refreshing over the course of a season with just two characters. Don't you want to know, Mike? Don't you want to know? So, yeah, because I have to make a choice, I'll give it a thriller. Yeah, because you'll watch it. I'll, I'll watch one or two more. Yeah, you see, see you're, you're hooked. You're hooked. Yeah, I knew it. Yeah. But yeah. I'm not. I'm not bought into it. Yeah, I yeah, haven't yeah. sold my soul yeah. on this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, okay, next up we'll have some previews and come to a bicycle near you. So the first one we saw this week was, um, Hyena, which is pretty much about off the rails cops in the UK. Yeah, and some bad guys. Lots of bad guys. Mm. What do we think of this? We're pretty bad, bad guys. Mm. With Transformers music. Oh, is it? The thing at the start was going... Oh, yeah. <laughs> so that's totally a Transformer revving up. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this has a few familiar faces. Uh, Stephen Graham, um, who we know from Boardwalk Empire. And uh, what was that other police show that we watched a while back? I can't oh, we're just good cop. Earlier. Good cop. Yeah. Good cop. Uh, Peter Fernando and Neil Masco. So um, this looks kind of like filth, but with many people, yeah, uh, sort of acting that way. Um, looks interesting. Yeah, yeah. And we like Mr. Graham. Yeah, I'd really like a chance to see this film. Actually, it's a lot in common with filth. It's just obviously set in a different time, where I guess filth might have been the order of the day. Um, it looks like there's a lot of really complicated relationships in there, and I and it seems to be very well acted from the from the little we could tell. So I'm I'm a little bit excited about this actually. It, it, it uh, took me by surprise. Um, I was a little bit disappointed to see that Liam Neeson wasn't involved. Yeah, seems like a slam dunk that he should have been one of the characters. But um, still, Liam Neeson aside, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing it. I'm wondering if the large words they used uh, to intercut the final moments of the trailer and make it seem frenetic and fast-paced are to do with the movie or if it's just marketing. Like, it was going, every man is an animal. And I was like, is that a philosophical statement that will then be explored by the activities in the film? Or is that just because you wanted to say a cool thing? Like, like genuinely. So I'm trying to figure out if this is just going to be Here's a guy, he's going to do some shady shit, it's going to get pretty intense, and there'll be like some action. Or, if it's actually going to try and write its way into being unique in that genre. So I don't know yet. Hmm. Okay. Um, second one we watched was uh, Sweet Francais. Oh, God. This is uh, set during the early years of German occupation in France, and romance blooms between a lovely young French villager and a big, mean-looking German soldier. Who comes to stay with them for summer or for his holidays? I don't know. What do you, what? <laughs> a fishing trip. Why is he there? I, I didn't catch that. <laughs> the the Nazi soldiers were, were billeted. Oh, they were just B and B. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. They didn't Germany have... invaded France, Steve. Sorry. Germany invaded France. Yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Was that the last newscast that you watched, Mark? It's. I'm not aware of current <laughs> affairs, <laughs> but I know the occasional joke from history. Someone got through and learned them something. Yeah, <laughs> no, I used to watch Hello, Hello when it. I was younger. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so this looks like uh, rubbish. A, a quite a romantic uh, mm, rubbish. movie against all odds kind of thing. Yeah, bring your yeah. missus. She'll love it. She'll love you for being sensitive and appreciating a movie like this. I think Sean will love us. 
No, fuck off. <laughs> First of all, I don't think women will love uh, what is going to be a bad film. I don't think anyone's going to love what is going to be a bad film. It looks like really predictable romance novel from a hundred years ago, but not the good hundred years ago. Mm-hmm. Tripe. It looks to me like, oh, will love bloom? Yeah, you showed us that in the fucking trailer, and now no one gives a shit. Oh, is someone going to get hurt? Yeah, you showed us someone getting shot in what looks to be a firing line. I don't care what happened to fictional people in history and about whether or not they got to kiss each other. Hey, don't kiss that guy. No, I'm going to kiss that guy. Well, I tried everything I could. Fuck (laughs) off. This is going to be a terrible film, and I don't like that I was made watch the trailer. You just don't appreciate handsome Nazis that can play the piano. <laughs> it's actually getting 7.4 already no on way. IMDb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It must be really good at the piano. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, only 60,000 people have seen the trailer, so it's only a few people who are rating it on IMDb. Um, lastly, we saw X plus Y. Um, and this involves a socially awkward teenager who is a maths prodigy. Mm-hmm. And uh, he finds new confidence and friendships mm. uh, when he lands a spot on the British squad at the International Mathematics Olympiad. Mm. But I don't think it will be as boring as what you just said. You know what? I don't <laughs> think so It sounds really either. boring on paper. It does, yeah. yeah. Um, I know, this he's looks- not socially awkward. He's autistic, I believe. Yeah. What did I say? Oh, yeah, borderline. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mm. Um, so yeah, I I thought this looks kind of good, and it, I think it's kind of a half follow up to Theory of Everything uh, imitation game. It's that kind of Mike, the, you're looking the, at me with scorn this, on your face. Fucking appalling. <laughs> the only thing that's wrong with that kid is that if his parents haven't kicked him out of the house on a Saturday night and given him a bottle of Buckfast and said, "Go down to the lads, <laughs> have a bit of crack," <laughs> you fucking nerd. <laughs> I think it's He's going to be. I think it's going to be a beautifully poignant voyage of discovery for a, a young boy becoming a man and learning a lot about who he is and what his place is in the world, trying to understand where trigonometry intersects with love. I am. Um, I didn't notice how cheesy this was until after I watched the trailer. Like I was actually watching it and going, I, like I was invested completely in what we were being shown in the trailer. Yeah. And only afterwards I was going. Uh, what if it's just full of cheesy stuff? So I'm, I'm a little worried on that level. But beyond that, everything else I'm interested in. The thing that really got me, the the thing that really made me cut some onions, was when the mother, because the father, we are, we are shown that the father dies, right? So it's a single mother raising a, a child on the autistic spectrum. Um, and she doesn't know why she can't do for the kid what uh, the father was able to do, whatever it was, whatever that thing was. And I was like, holy shit, there's no way. Like, she's never going to know. He can't tell her. But he's the person who would know, but he can't tell her because he's the person who could never speak about yeah. those kinds of emotions in that way and request X, Y, and Z support from her. And I'm like, that's terrible. And I know the situation in two scenes or two snippets of scenes. And I got really like, oh. And then they hit me, right? <laughs> they hit me with the mats then. And I was like, oh, look at him. He's doing mats. He's doing loads of maths, and I don't understand it, but everyone else says it's class. And then I was like, wait, why is this movie called X plus Y? And why is there, like, a a, a budding romance that I mean, wait a minute, an X is a variable, and a Y is also a variable, just like human beings. So one person and another are always (laughs) X plus Y. But the question is, what does that equal? I hope it's love. <laughs> Very good, John. <laughs> That's pretty much it in a nutshell, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to see this. Yeah. I don't care what giving out you do. They, you can take your fucking X and Y chromosomes and shut <laughs> shut them up your ass. <laughs> okay, uh, we'll leave it there then. Yeah. So. <laughs> Uh, thanks for listening. Uh, we'll be back next week. Uh, I think we'll, we'll be missing Shona again next week, unfortunately. But, uh, yeah. We might persuade her out of that. I think she had a dinner plan, but we mm-hmm. might have to ring up and cancel it or something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what What did you think about my efforts to be the uh, voice of feminism on the podcast tonight? I thought I did quite well. Not too bad. What Not too bad. <laughs> yeah. What fucking efforts? I like the, I like the last thing you said about women was that they'll definitely like this movie <laughs> about a German Nazi and a lady because you know women they love love 
I thought the dress he's wearing uh, did a lot for it. A nice little plum yeah, number. Yeah, yeah, it's good got, effort it's there, got Mike. Frills, you know. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it, it, it's you know this. the decolletage is exposed. You know, it's, it's good. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> just a word of warning: if uh, don't forget to uh, retweet any tweets that Mark sends out, or he'll get you <coughs> in future. <laughs> so I'll leave it there. So from Mike, Mark, Stephen, Sean, stay classy.